This video will demonstrate how to find the first moment of area and the shear flow for a composite cross section using Shape Builder. Let's get started. In this example, we will look at a composite steel plate girder system. First, using the Draw Shape button, we will draw a rectangular shape on the grid for the concrete deck. We will change the material from the default material to concrete. Also, we will give the shape an appropriate name. Next, we will drag in a simple parametric eye shape for the plate girder and adjust its dimensions accordingly. The default A992 steel is acceptable for the plate girder and we will give the eye shape an appropriate name. Selecting the vertex on the girder, we will snap the girder to the bottom of the slab. Now that we are done creating shapes, we will turn off the drawing grid. Switching to the analysis view, we will add some shear to the girder in the negative y direction. Now looking at the results and switching to the advanced tab, we see that there is a section for shear flow. For both the deck and the girder, the first moment of area, Q, is calculated about the x-axis and the y-axis. Also, the shear flow, F, is calculated as a function of the shear force in the x-direction, which is Vx, and as a function of the shear force in the y-direction, which is Vy. Note that Qx and Qy have an asterisk which indicates that the value is transformed by the modular ratio. If we go back to Sketch View and then click on the Modify tab in the Project Manager, we can change the base material from concrete to steel. Notice that the values for Q also changed since the modular ratio was inverted. The shear flow for the deck and the girder is useful to determine the load on the connectors between the deck and the girder. But what if we wanted to determine the shear flow on, say, the welds between the top flange and the web? Instead of having to recreate the girder using separate shapes for the flanges and the web, we can simply go to the Shapes ribbon and click on the Shear Flow Location button. Next, we can specify the number of horizontal and vertical lines where we want to calculate the shear flow. For this example, we will only need one horizontal line at the bottom of the girder's top flange. After entering the value for this line and clicking OK, the line appears in the shear flow section of the advanced tab with the corresponding values for the first moment of area and for the shear flow. Clicking on the report view, we can add an image of the cross section with the shear flow line shown, and we can add a table of the shear flow results to the report. Thank you for watching and have a great day.